Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. I want to do a quick video on this really interesting knife that I have on loan from Blade HQ. This is the Rick Hinder Half Track, and this particular model is a Blade HQ exclusive. You can see their logo right here. Uh, this one's done in titanium S35EM blade steel, but it has some cutouts here and some anodizing work, and then obviously the logo on both sides that make this one exclusive to Blade HQ. Now, if you guys have been on my channel for a while, and I'm, again, I'm going to assume that most of you have who actually watch my videos with regularity, you're going to know that I'm a big fan of Rick Hinder designs, um, such as the Zero Tolerance uh, 0562, um, and especially the Zero Tolerance 0392 series. Um, I have, uh, I, I had most of them, not all of them, unfortunately. I mean, I would happily have all of them, but um, I've had most of them over the years. And so, again, big fan of Rick Hinder designs, um, especially when ZT does them, because on paper, and with regard to price, the ZT offerings are better. I'll just, I'll say better, you know, for the materials that you get in line with the price and, and the fit and the finish and all that good stuff. So, anyways, kind of the moral of the story is, I really like Hinder's designs, but I've stayed away from, you know, Rick Hinder and I's um, ever since I got into collecting. And again, price on paper and specs on paper, and then the other is, you know, I, I think that a lot of the Hinder knives have been talked about to death. Um, you go to YouTube, which you're currently on, you search the XM18 videos, I mean, there's probably going to be well over a thousand, right? So what's the point in talking about something that has been around for so long? So anyways, I was attracted to this piece because of the um, beautiful finish work. I wanted to check it out. Um, so I asked Blade HQ to borrow this one, and to be honest, I've been quite intrigued, uh, maybe even captivated by this knife, and I'm going to probably say just Rick Hinder knives in general, um, ones that I've never given a chance before. So let's look at the specs on this one just for consistency's sake, and I have a bunch of different uh, size comparisons here in a similar size range. So Guardian Tactical Helix the Kaiser Ursa Minor and Lion Steel TRE so I mean there's just a couple but blade length is 2.75 uh, handle length is 3.875 overall 6.625 handle thickness comes in at 0 0.53 inches Blade thickness 0.16 inches and it weighs in at uh, 4.3 ounces. So, you know, it's a small frame lock flipper that runs on Teflon washers. Um, and yeah, so that is the Rick Hinder half track. Um, there were some size comparisons. So, what do I find interesting about this knife? Well, to be honest, sometimes knives and anything that's produced can be more than the sum of its parts. And I feel like the, I don't know, this knife might have some of that to it. You know, with regard to price, um, it's $585. Pretty expensive for the materials that you're getting here. Um, all of his full titanium ones are $585. The ones that have G10 scales are $425. Um, they, Blade HQ has a custom of the half tracks. It's like $1,700, so... You know, 425 to 1700 is the price range. Um, not inexpensive by any means, but they are USA made. And, you know, the quality is, is really, really good. Um, there's, no, there's no faults, there's no defects with this knife. Um, the standoffs are shouldered, and so the, the handles can't shift back and forth as you open the knife. Um, again, it runs on Teflon washers, which aren't as exciting as bearings these days, but it opens reliably and and you know fairly easily the machining on the pivot screw um, is very fine and so you can really dial in the exact spot or the exact tension that you want on the pivot um, with with ease although one thing that I would caution is you probably need blue Loctite because as I was flipping this thing um, the pivot did come loose the blade came off center and it hit the frame so um, you know, blue Loctite would probably be recommended on this knife as it is with, honestly, just about most knives, in at least my opinion. So, yeah, I mean, it's 
it's really well done. Um, it has a great look. Again, the Blade HQ exclusive with the cutouts here is the best looking of any of the half tracks. Um, but ergos are really, really nice. Um, even in my large hand, it fits very comfortably. And I really like that. Um, the jimping on the spine of the blade is, you know, incredibly well done. Very grippy, not sharp. The detent um, obviously has to be a little bit stronger since it's on washers instead of bearings, and I would describe this detent as sticky. It's not strong, it's it's sticky. So, it, in a good way. Um, I don't know, I guess you'd have to feel this one, but um, I love the presentation. The pocket clip works exceptionally well. Um, I mean, everything's really well tuned. So, you know, this knife is, is more than the sum of its parts. It's more than just S35VN and titanium handles, because um, there are a lot of offerings with that. Um, so, I, I don't know, it's, it's been really interesting. Um, one interesting thing here is that the that hole you see right here that goes all the way through, it's actually the detent hole. You can see the track there from the detent ball. <clears throat> and they drilled all the way through. Um, the pivot they gold anodized down in the pivot itself and then obviously sat in the flats here. So, I don't know. I I almost feel like I'm drinking the Kool-Aid a little bit because of how much I like this knife. Um, and, you know, people get really upset when you say drinking the Kool-Aid, but, I mean, it's it happens as everyone's, you know, if everyone tells you it's a really nice knife or it's a really nice watch or it's a really nice pen or car or whatever, if that's what you keep hearing from everyone, it's slowly going to affect your own opinion over time. And so, I mean, that's always been kind of my thing with Hinder or Chris Reeve um, is that I didn't want other people's opinions to sway me without forming my own. Um, but, yeah, I don't know, There's there's just something to it. There's something interesting about it, so. Anyways, I think I'm just rambling at this point, but let me give you guys an up-close look. The blue anodizing still has that working finish, so you can carry it without too much guilt. Sometimes I slip on this one. Um, I would obviously enjoy some additional texturing here um, but I don't mind that this is on washers I mean it opens reliably um, without really any concern for the most part obviously closing you know it's it's not gonna be your drop shut action but not really a big deal so it just feels like a working knife um, it really does have that I don't know that quality to it whatever that is you know if it's the hinderer secret sauce or whatever but, anyways, I just want to share this one with you guys. Um, obviously, I've rambled a bit about it um, because, I mean, even my own thoughts are not super concise on this knife. Um, it's it's more interesting and it's more enthralling than I thought it would actually be. And if I could keep them all, then yeah, I would I would certainly add this one to my uh, my collection. But at this point, I need to downsize, not increase. So, you know. Obviously, buying this one wouldn't really help. So, anyways, thoughts, comments, let me know. Um, you know, I'm sure that most of you guys watching have tried to hinder at some point. You know, what have you thought? Did you like it? Did you keep it? Um, you know, in the marketplace today, you can find a lot of knives with titanium handles and S35VM blade steel for significantly less expensive. Are they going to be as nicely machined as this one? Mm, maybe. Probably not. Um... Are you going to be able to use them as a knife as well as this one? Yeah, I, th I think you absolutely are. So, anyways, I'll leave it there before I ramble any further. But thanks so much for watching. Take care.